Hey everybody, happy Tuesday. It's so good to be here and to be sharing with all of you. Today, I want to welcome you and um, share, um, let you know what I'm going to be doing. So you can decide if you want to stay tuned or not. So today, I'm going to be talking about my PM skincare routine. And um, in this routine, I'm going to be sharing with you some techniques for cleansing, how to properly cleanse the skin, how to remove makeup from the skin, and how to do my detoxifying cleansing massage because um, the pollution that we encounter throughout the day, each day, is very toxic to our skin. Um, air pollution actually um, damages your DNA, damages your cells. It also um, slows down that healing and repair process. Cell regeneration really slows down when we are exposed to pollutants in our environment and in our air. So we're gonna talk about how to cleanse um, the skin of that. We are also gonna talk about collagen loss that happens uh, as we enter menopause and what we can do uh, for that. I'm also gonna talk, spend some time talking about the eye area. So um, I have some special techniques and things that I use around the eye area to treat a more advanced signs of aging in that area. So we'll go over that today, how to actually apply your eye cream correctly and how to layer your eye serums and eye creams to get the best um, results as as your aging um, needs as you as you mature as you mature and your skincare needs progress we need a little more attention um, and a little more um, sorry stumbling over my words today let's get going here you just need a little more advanced care for that delicate eye area than we have been traditionally trained to give it because most people, you're just told how, you know, you're really, it's pounded home to us that we need an eye cream. And it can't be your regular face cream, it needs to be your eye cream. But we don't see much going beyond that. So I'm gonna go beyond that. How, how many of you have actually been using eye cream Probably since your 20s, you've been using eye cream, but you're still, still seeing a lot of progressing signs of aging. And maybe every cream that you're putting on it now doesn't really make a difference, and you're not sure why. And that's because we needed more, some more advanced techniques. So I'm going to go after different issues around the eyes that can come up. Um, one being a drooping or sagging of the eyelids and a crepiness in the skin around the eyelids. Also, what about some yellowing? how many of you have noticed that you're getting some yellowing of the skin around that eye area so we have a, a collagen loss going on we have um, dna damage going on we have aging um, um, we have some elastosis going on so we get some rigidity that's what's causing the little crepiness that we can see out around the eye area it can be that elastosis or glycation happening and not everybody has um, glycation and everybody has different degrees of it. So how do you know which products to choose um, for your particular eye needs? And so we're gonna go over that today. So I'm gonna start out with what, um, kind of my philosophy for, I'm gonna share with you for the PM routine. There's a lot of people out there who want to do just a morning routine or just a PM routine. And um, my stressor, what I stress to everyone is that both are equally important. You, if you don't do a nighttime routine, you're not removing all that pollution from the day. You're not rehydrating your skin. You're not getting um, a massage going where you detoxify the tissues and get the lymphatics moving. And when you have stagnation in the skin, you're gonna see premature aging. So it's really important to do an AM and a PM routine. Now, I'm like many of you, I'm tired at night. You know, I have my granddaughter around a few nights a week. She comes and stays with me and I'm tired and I want a quick routine at night. So this routine is really pretty darn quick. And in fact, I'll even share with you how sometimes I'll cut it down to just um, cleansing and two products on those certain nights when I just needed to be so quick and easy. And then on other times I can take a little extra time around my eye area 
but mostly I'm not, um, I have a great cream I'm using for nighttime for my whole face and neck. So I'm not having to spend too much time applying a lot of products in that area. So my nighttime routine, a lot of times includes some correction for the eye area. We can't do that kind of correcting during the day because we're wearing makeup and things like that, which also contribute to aging our eye area. Eye makeup, mascara, eyeshadows, all of those are so drying. And if we don't remove those at night and do some repair work, it takes its toll on our eyes. So I'm gonna start off, because I'm gonna do this protocol right here with you. I'm just gonna start my PM routine early today. And I'm gonna first of all get my hair out of my face. So I'm putting on my Tassie. These are available on our website. Our acne clients actually sleep in these because it keeps their hair and all those oils off of their face. Here we go. Okay, roll my sleeves up. So the first thing that I want to address when um, at nighttime when I'm getting in front of the sink is I want to get all the makeup and the pollution off of my skin. Now, many people tell me, even if they have dry skin, that they have some congestion in their pores. They get a buildup of sebaceous filaments in their nose and this area. Sometimes um, in this area, because this is part of that T-zone here, we can get a buildup in our pores. And the only way there's some ways to break it down. I mean, a lot of people go after that with strong acids, but you don't need to do that. And it's not always the best way. What we at our skincare have found to be the best way, and I'm gonna show you um, a cleansing system that's actually, um, I think that I missed, I grabbed the wrong thing off my counter today. So it's gonna be interesting doing our routine, but I'll tell you what I do. And it is typed down below. Somehow I, I left this, I grabbed two of the same products. So I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. So starting off with, I'm gonna use Michelle Corley's pore cleansing oil because the pore cleansing oil, and I'm using dry hands. This is completely dry hands. I'm gonna turn this so it's open. There we go. I get some up and out here, a couple pumps. And I'm applying this oil straight to my skin. Now, you often probably have heard me say, don't use balms, don't use heavy oils when you're cleansing your face. But I want you to know that a first time, a first cleanse can be fine to use a balm or oil. What you wanna do is make sure that the oil that you're using actually emulsifies in water. So I'm gonna show you what that means in a few minutes. First of all, I'm just gonna do my two minutes of massage. And I'm gonna get in here and just loosen up all the makeup. I'm gonna remove my eye makeup with you guys. Gently see, I'm getting all the black into there now. My mascara, get that all in there. Now I massage my skin for two full minutes. This is how I get my lymphatic drainage happening, increase my circulation. Just doing all of that helps to have less stagnation in your skin and a healthier overall skin tone. So I'm massaging my forehead. I like to use, you'll see me use my knuckles a lot. I like to do it on my lips. My neck. the earlobes. And part of this is just this massage too is just unwinding, taking a few minutes to tune into yourself and actually do a massage that feels good. Noticing where the tension is and releasing that tension. Now I've done a nice massage with just the oil. So the oil from Michelle Corley's product has gone in and mixed with the oils in my skin and in my pores. Now people that get a lot of congestion in their, in their nose or um, around their face, they just get some oily blackheads and congestion. This just gets in there and connects with that oil that's trapped in your skin. 
So the next thing that I'm doing is I'm getting my hands wet. Hold on a minute, I need a towel. Okay, I don't want to drip water all over my clothes today. So I'm getting my water on my hands and now I'm rubbing the water on it. I'm actually emulsifying the oil. So the oil is now binding with the water and because the oil was bound with the oils in my skin, when I emulsify it and bring it to the surface, the oil, Michelle Corley's oils are bound with my oils and it's pulling them up and out. It's a little bit of skin chemistry going on here. I'm gonna work my eyes, get my eye makeup off there. Great, now I'm gonna grab my Lush cloth AOS Lush Cloths in the Reward Center. Get them there. Now this whole protocol you can find on my website. If you go to artistskincare.com and you go along the top navigation and you look at skincare, and then you'll see a tab that says Gina's Protocols. In Gina's Protocols, you can then find my PM, my winter PM routine for this year. So you can see all of this written down and you can even follow along if you'd like to while I'm doing it. So a lot of times people feel like they want to stop there. Okay, I've removed my makeup, I've used this oil, good to go, but I'm gonna tell you don't stop there. This is just a first cleanse. Your skin is made up of 65 to 70% water. Your skin needs hydration. So if we just use oil on it, we're not giving the skin the water that it needs. So my next step, and the product that I absolutely love, and I'm so bummed out I didn't bring it, is from Michelle Corley, it's her hydrating cleanser. So then my next step is I use hydrating cleanser to cleanse the skin. Hydrating cleanser really opens up the skin so that it can accept that water. It kind of breaks that surface tension of the skin, allows that water to get in. There's no acids in it, so it's very gentle, and it leaves your skin really plump and juicy and soft. But I'm gonna grab a different cleanser. I'm gonna look over here and see what I have. I have Face Realities Ultra Gentle. So you're gonna, I'm gonna use that as my cleanser today. I'm gonna make do. So I first do my oil cleanse. This cleanser has not been opened in a little while over here. So let's get it out. There we go. I did my oil cleanse first. And now I am using a gel cleanser. And that's the order that you wanna go in. So I foam up my gel cleanser in my hands and then I apply it to my face. Now with your gel cleanser, this is where you can get your My Skin Buddy in action, right? Because the My Skin Buddy is gonna help cleanse the skin and it's also gonna help drive water hydration down into the skin. Use my My Skin Buddy on the first red setting, that's your cleansing setting. If it doesn't slip, it means you just need to add more water. So get more water on there. This is also gonna lift up and vibrate out any leftover debris or pollution in my skin that might be left from the first cleanse. Could spend more time on that when you're at home. I want to be sure I have large pores on the sides of my nose and leading down in this area. So of course I'm going to get in and get those areas. But my skin buddy gets warm and that could be a really nice asset when you're cleansing. It warms the cleanser. Feels good. All right. 
holding it down to turn it off. There we go. And grabbing my Lush cloth and some fresh water. And now I remove my gel cleanser. And our next step, we're gonna get into that exciting stuff. We're gonna talk about eyes, aging eyes, and how to address aging eye issues at nighttime. Make sure they've got my eye makeup off here. I also wanna make sure that I get all the oil off of the eye area. I have kind of oily eyes anyway, and I don't want that to interfere with the next steps, the next products I'm gonna be using. All right, feels like I have all my cleanser off now. Okay, a pat dry. Now, those of you who know me and have been with me for a while, you know I never go without recovery. So that's the first thing I grab after cleansing is I do one pump of recovery and I just reply, apply it everywhere, even the eye area. It's just everywhere. Pat it in. Now let's talk about some eye issues. So I have a few different things that I do at night. Essentially, I have two different routines for nighttime, maybe three if we count. I mentioned that I have one routine when I'm in a super hurry. So my super hurry routine, I'll tell you it because it's super quick. I'm grabbing my Hale and Hush Brilliant Eye and Lip Serum, and I'm putting that on the lips and eyes and then putting on my night cream and I'm done. But today we're gonna do a little more advanced work around the eye area. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about two different products that I use in my nighttime routine. One of them is the Antioch Eye Cream. The other one is um, from Rhonda Allison. It's the Moisture Eyezyme. So the Moisture Eyezyme is an enzyme treatment that you can do around your eye area. Now the beauty of that enzyme is that it digests away dry, dull, dead skin cells. So who needs that? So if you've got dry skin or you've got a lot of yellowing, maybe you've got some yellowing going on around your eyes, or maybe in this area you have little bumps going on, that, those things indicate that you could use some little light, some gentle exfoliation around your eye area. So that's where Moisture Eyezyme comes into play. Moisture Eyezyme can be applied all the way in. You wanna be careful not to get it right into the lash line, but it can go pretty darn close to the eye area. And then leave it on. I'm gonna put some on my eyes. So you're gonna to wanna to put it on and leave it there for 10 to 15 minutes. Now, some people with very sensitive eyes might have to rinse this off and remove it after 10 to 15 minutes and then put on their other eye cream. Others who have a little stronger skin find that they can wait 10 or 15 minutes and then they grab their eye cream and you can put your eye cream on top of it. And what I'm using is um, Antiage's eye cream. This eye cream is really a, a gel. For a long time, I kept calling it a serum. As I really, I felt like it was a serum. It should have been called a serum. It's really a light gel cream and I love it. Many eye creams, especially during the day when you put on regular eye creams, you cannot go closer to your eyes than the orbital bone. When we put on a regular eye cream, that's where you're going to apply it, even at nighttime, morning and night, regular eye creams go here. But when you use a light gel or a serum, you can get in a bit closer. So with the Antiage, I'm gonna come in and I have some repair work that needs to go on in this area because I have some elastosis going on, kind of crepey lines in here. 
I have that yellowing. I have a real delicate, the under eye area as we age, it gets thinner and more delicate feeling. So I like to be able to use the Auntie especially at night, because I can get into those more delicate areas and really treat them. Now, because it's more of a serum and a light gel, that means that it is not necessarily very moisturizing which is good in this area right around here you don't want oils you don't want it to be too moisturizing it or it'll travel down into your eyes and cause irritation so at nighttime what i do for the areas that need more moisture is i'm either using Rhonda allison's um, eye and lip repair serum or or i'm using hale and hush's brilliant lip serum the difference between those two is the Rhonda Allison one, it has some retinol in it. And the Brilliant does not have any retinol in it. So some people um, can use retinol in this area and actually need it. Who needs retinol in that area? Those people who have a real thickening of lines in this area around the eyes where it almost looks like a layer of skin on top of your skin that when you smile, there's like a layer of maybe light orange peel um, in this area or you have that bit of orange peeliness around the lips, you need to use Rhonda Allison's um, Eye and Lip Repair Serum. Those that don't necessarily have that or who are more sensitive and can't use retinol too much around the eye area, you want to use Hale and Hush's Brilliant Eye and Lip. Both have a very similar consistency. It's an oligopeptide in there. And can you see that luminescence? Really pretty. The first place, oh, I just dropped it. There we go. The first place that I put this always is on the lips. And I do it all the way around the lips. So I have this mermaid effect. And you guys are gonna love it through the rest of my video. I'm gonna have these shiny mermaid effect on my lips. And then I'm gonna take the leftovers and it goes out on that drier area where the lines are. So it's going out on that outer orbital bone area. I get a, some kitty whiskers right here, so sometimes I'll put some right there. But it's all down in the outer area. Really important to keep it out in that area because if you get too close, it's going to travel this is very occlusive and oily it's going to travel into your eyes it's going to cause inflammation and irritation in your eyeball and not only that but getting too close to your eyes with this even if you wash your face in the morning the next day your eyes are going to be a bit oily and you're probably going to see some traveling of your eye makeup and your mascara so this is a really important treatment for these crow's feet and all this going on out here but keep it out there keep it out in that outer area super important now i saw a question pop up about the eye rejuvenator you can use the eye rejuvenator at nighttime you can use it with the antiage eye cream gel but i use my eye rejuvenator in the morning i use it um, with the same product in the morning and that's when i like to do it my nighttime routine i keep it short and simple or I won't do it. So you gotta know yourself and when you like to do it. When I write protocols for my clients, I often have them using their devices in the morning. Uh, but not everyone is a morning person. Some people wanna use it at night and we can always adapt that and change it around and you can do it, your devices at nighttime. You can use them morning or nighttime, whichever works best for you. I just find at nighttime, I'm tired at the end of the day and I don't want to be doing a lot of devices and things like that. So that's why I didn't use the eye rejuvenator this, for this PM routine. Now, my, so I've got my eyes covered. So um, kind of some things that I hit just to recap um, so that it makes sense for you. If you have um, sunken under eyes or this eye area is getting really fragile or maybe it's getting really puffy or bruisey looking, um, Antiage eye cream is that thing that's going to go after that. If you have um, a lot of progressive lines and drooping of the eyelids, this will also go after that, um, that issue. If you have 
crow's feet coming out, everyone does, you treat those with the brilliant eye and lip. If you have glycation around the eyes, so that's where you have a bit of orange peeliness, so when you smile, you get this kind of orange peely texture on the sides of there, that's when you're gonna grab Rhonda Allison's Eye and Lip Repair Serum. Now to that, I'm using, and I showed you the Moisture Eyezyme, that can be used two or three times a week, and that treats little bumpies in this area, it treats yellowing or discoloration on the eyelids, and it just provides a really nice exfoliation, even if you're getting dryness around the eyes, it's gonna give you a very gentle, light exfoliation. So enzymes are different than acids. So using that enzyme, it's gonna digest away the dry, dead, dull skin cells very gently. We don't wanna use an acid around that area because acids can travel into our eye area and be very uncomfortable where the, the moisture enzyme, enzyme is much safer to use around the eyes, okay? So that's a bit of a recap on my eyes. Now, uh, the next thing that I grab at night, I grab my Emma Pell night cream. I am 50, gonna be 59. I'm gonna start saying it now because next month I turn 59. So I'm 59 and I have been in menopause um, solidly in a menopause for probably five years now. And I, um, four years, 59, four years. I hit menopause at 55. But you know, prior to that, you're, you're in menopause. So probably I've been in menopause for nine years, right? So when you're in menopause, the estro there are estrogen receptors in your skin. And when you don't have the estrogen to hit those, you start losing collagen. And in the first five years, of menopause, you lose 30% of your collagen, and then you lose 2% per um, year after that. So Emma Pell has a magic ingredient called MEP, which goes after that and binds um, those estrogen receptors in the skin so that they keep producing the collagen. So this is gonna help me to um, reestablish some of the collagen I've lost, and it's gonna help slow down future collagen loss. And it also has in it retinol. So this is my retinol night cream. Retinol also stimulates collagen. So this is all about collagen repair and um, protection with our Emma Pell product. So if you are brand new to using retinol or sometimes you're just one of those people whose skin can be a little sensitive at first to retinol, then you wanna put on Rhonda Allison's DNH Reversal. This is, um, helps mitigate any uncomfortable sensations that you can get for five months, four or five months. And so I'm not needing to put the DNA age reversal underneath it anymore. I am one of those people that can be very sensitive to retinol. But I also want to tell you guys that this stuff lasts forever. I've had this since October and I still have a couple more months worth in here. It's crazy. It's the bottle that just keeps on giving. And I put it on pretty thick some nights. Some nights I just want a really strong retinol treatment so I'll almost put it on like a mask. So it's really thick on my forehead, thick on my cheeks, on my nose, the top of the nose. We lose a lot of collagen on the top of our nose. So I want it there. I've had to learn to be a little more careful with the mouth area. So that's why I put my Brilliant um, Lip Serum, Brilliant Eye and Lip Cream. That's why I put that on first because it's gonna give me a little bit of a barrier to protect my lips from this retinol in my Emma Pell. And I put it on my neck. Get your earlobes. How many have noticed that your earlobes start to look older when you hit 50? That's when I noticed it and I started treating my earlobes better. So all the way around the neck, and then I have a shirt on, but I would normally do all across my chest as well. And then for the most part, I'm done. So when I said that I want, a, some nights I just need a really quick routine, I'm washing my face, I'm putting on my Brilliant Eye and Lip, and I'm putting on my Emma Pell Eye Cream, and I'm done. And that's it, and it's great. So my skin is really well taken care of and really well fed. Now, a few of you have really dry skin, and um, and sometimes you have a neck that can be reactive to retinol, and that's when you wanna pull in Sorella the Balm. So 
When you're using a retinol product of any kind, they can be dehydrating to the skin. They can, they're not really dehydrating. What's happening is they're speeding up cell renewal. So your skin starts sloughing off those damaged skin cells and that can feel like dryness. And when that skin gets really dry, it can then become irritated. So using the balm as a little top coat on those drier areas or those sensitive areas can help mitigate any kind of negative reaction your skin might have to your retinol. So patting on my balm, and also this just smells so good. The balm has this amazing scent. My granddaughter, Elowen, she's gonna be seven, and she loves this stuff too. She gets KP, which is keratosis pilaris, little bumps on her cheeks, and she gets them on her arms. So we have a special scrub that we use for her that doesn't have any acids in it, um, it's from Hale and Hush. Uh, it's very gentle, but we use that a couple times a week. And then we use the balm. And she loves putting on the balm. Um, she feels like this is her jar. And it smells so good. She says, I love coming to your house, Mimi, because everything smells so good. <laughs> so I'm training her from a young age to be a skincare fanatic like the rest of us, right? So she really loves that. So that is my nighttime routine. That's my nighttime protocol. I'm getting the retinol in there for rejuvenation. I'm doing some special treatments around the eyes to really help rejuvenate and strengthen the tissues around my eyes and my lips. And, um, and my skin feels great. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna tune into questions. Let me get my laptop up here, it went to sleep. I'm gonna get my laptop on and I wanna tune in and start just answering the questions that you guys have about what I just did and what's happening for you this week in your skincare routine. Valentina says she's been using eye serums for many years for crepiness and lifting the eyelids followed by microcurrent every evening and morning. That's a fabulous, fabulous plan. Start, follow Valentina's lead and start young doing it. Start when you first hit 50. I'm Not many people are gonna do it. So I guess there are some that do it, but most of my clients, they hit 50 and then they go, something's happened. And then they're more willing to start doing more layers and a few extra things in their skincare routine. Okay, we have Alex says, Quick question unrelated to today's topic. Okay, would you do, do either an MBK Curve or Time Master Pro right after microneedling session? So it is very popular um, to do the TMP right after microneedling. Um, I have a new protocol and some new products that I'm gonna be sharing with you guys, a whole new, um, whole new device for getting growth factors in the skin with microneedling and we will be doing the TMP with that. Valentina says she added, recently added the eye rejuvenator and she's loving that, I assume, because she's got an exclamation point there. Uh, Cammie says, can you put any moisture on top of acne med 5%? So that's a really good question. You can put, um, we recommend putting things underneath your acne med and it has to be a gel base. It cannot be a milky lotion or anything with oils in it. Um, it will travel through those oils and get into areas where you don't want it. And it'll also, it can also neutralize the acne med. So when you use acne med, you want to use an eye gel. So the anti eye cream, that is an eye gel. Um, Neogenesis has an eye gel and Michelle Corley has an eye gel. You can, and Face Reality has an eye gel. So you can use any of those eye gels um, before you put on your acne med. And then underneath your acne med, especially if you're feeling like you need to be putting on a moisturizer, what that means is that you need to be putting on a thicker hydrating gel. So Hydrobalance is what Face Reality makes to go underneath your acne med, but we sell a product from Michelle Corley. It's called Ultimate Hydration Gel. I think I saw it over here. Uh, well, it looks about like this. <laughs> That's not exactly it, but um, Michelle Cor Corley's Ultimate Hydration Gel is hands down the favorite amongst my clients and my staff, they apply that gel first and then put on your acne med. And that's it, that's all you can do. You actually want your skin to be a little bit dry 
um, when you are clearing up your acne. Now, if your acne has been staying clear, you've been clear for six months, a year, then talk to our acne specialists or, or do a customized protocol and we can help you to adapt your acne safe routine to be a little more anti-aging and you probably don't need to keep using your acne med at that point. But if you're still breaking out and you still need to be on your acne med, you want your skin to be a little bit dry, but you can help that by putting on that ultimate hydration gel from Michelle Corley underneath it. Kizzy says, what is your favorite growth factor? So I'm really picky about growth factors. So that's a tough question. Now, if you ask me what is my favorite stem cell, um, I have two favorites. I love Neogenesis and I love Antioge. I tend to, well, the, well, I use the Antioge on my eyes and then I tend to use the Neogenesis stem cell on my face because I like to layer a lot of different things. And the Antioge um, serums, um, serum and accelerator are kind of a complete set system. So I like to customize my system. So that's why I use the Neogenesis Recovery. I tell you, I get 100% great results with both products. Um, I'm not a super big fan of isolated growth factors. So when you look on a bottle and it says EGF, um, EGF DNA, um, I'm not a super big fan of those. I do use them and we use them for speeding up healing with our acne clients and things like that. But anybody who has had skin cancer, uh, they cannot use EGFs. So you need to stay away from those isolated growth factors like EGF because it can actually, it's just not recommended in an oncology protocol. That's all I'll say. So my two favorites, long story short, two favorites are Neogenesis and Antiage. And those are the ones that I use every day on my skin. Kareen wants to know what causes broken blood vessels or capillaries under the eye and nose and how to get rid of them. She's currently using Neogenesis eye serum and she would appreciate a comment on that. I would love to comment on that. So when we see a lot of broken capillaries or capillaries rising up to the surface, I the, one of the first things I do is I look at your skincare routine. I make sure you're not using oils and I make sure you're not using heavy balms on your skin. I want your skin to be able to breathe. If you're using a lot of essential oils or you know, you're just one of those natural people who's using oils on their skin as their skincare routine, when you occlude the skin with oil, it can't breathe. And so those capillaries get more fragile, they rise to the surface and you see more broken capillaries. So that can be an issue there. Anytime you have a compromised barrier, you can increase capillary problems. So if you are prone to dryness or um, you have rough, dry, exposed skin, or you're not using sunscreen every day, um, even when it's overcast, you are um, compromising your barrier and you can um, start to see those kind of capillary things happening. I have a lot of broken capillaries on the sides of my nose because when I was a youngster, I mean, I was destined to be an esthetician. I picked and I had tended to have blackheads around my nose and I would just pick daily on those and I broke my capillaries in, in those areas. So those are not going to heal. The only way to heal those, I believe, is if you go and get a laser treatment and have them lasered. You still have to be careful. If they hit a main uh, capillary in there, you could see, you could end up with a hole in the side of your nose. From that, you need a really experienced laser person. If you're working with that, you could end up with blood supply not reaching a certain area if you damage a capillary with a laser, and then you have some necrosis. So my best thing that I do for those is I use a Luminaire foundation. I put on my sunscreen, and sometimes I mix it with the Luminaire, or I just use the Luminaire by itself, and I get in there, and I just cover up those little capillaries with my Illuminaire foundation and I'm gentle with that whole area. Um, the other people that can see a lot of problems with capillaries rising to the surface are those who have rosacea. And rosacea is an inflammatory disorder. So we're working from the inside out on alleviating inflammation in their body and on their skin. And I have certain protocols for skincare that I use uh, with people that have that. Can you strengthen the skin? If you're, uh, oh, scrubs. 
scrubs on the skin will break the capillaries and when i see those on my clients they have like starbursts of broken capillaries all over their face uh, from scrubs those can be healed uh, the best thing for strengthening your capillaries is retinaldehyde or retinol um, but all in all it's just a really good healthy skincare routine that's taking care of your skin barrier and really protecting it so i hope that was helpful um Lisa says, I see my esthetician every six weeks. Yay, I do too, that's great. Um, she only sells two brands and I think I need a new different brand of peptide serum. I use mine in the morning, I'm 48 and take great care of my skin. So Lisa, yes, um, my clients in their morning routines are using peptides. They're also using peptides in their PM routine. It all kind of depends on what the rest of your skincare protocol is on, um, that would help me determine which peptides and where I would pull them in. Um, for peptides, I have an amazing moisturizer from Sorella, blueberry milk moisturizer. You could use that in the morning and that'll pull in some peptides. We have peptides from Rhonda Ellison and her Peptide 38. Um, there's peptides in the Emma Pell serum for during the day. There's just a lot of different ways that I incorporate peptides into a skincare routine. I do have many clients that see regular estheticians and then they also do um, they and then they also see me or email with me and we do um, skin care I prescribe skin care from them and do their daily protocol for them so Lisa you may want to do either the customized protocol on my website or the healthy aging protocol and I can help you to really fine-tune your skincare routine and really address what it is you're wanting to address with those peptides because it may not even just be peptides you're needing and maybe we just need to make some adjustments to address what you're seeing going on with your skin. Sue says she's currently going through the clear skin coaching so I'm only using Bion Youthful Eyes in the AM, no eye cream in PM is there an eye cream that's compatible with acne med 5%? Yes. So you can use um, the one that I use today, and that's the Antiage eye cream. You can also use um, Michelle Corley's Peptide Eye Serum. That's amazing. It has so, talk about peptides. If you want, actually, if you want to drench your skin in peptides, go look at Michelle Corley. She has a peptide serum. Um, for the face and she has one for the eyes and they are the most power packed peptide serums I have ever found and in fact when she first came out with the eye serum she didn't have a face serum we used to put her eye serum all over our entire faces and then she finally started making the um, the face serum for us too so we have the she has a peptide face serum and a peptide eye serum that both can be used with acne med you just put them on first and then put your acne med on top. So since you're 55, Sue, what I would say is I would put on Michelle Corley's Peptide Eye Serum, Michelle Corley's Peptide Face Serum. Then I would put on Michelle Corley's Ultimate Hydration Gel, let that all dry, and then put on your acne med. Because at 55, yeah, we're trying to be more careful. We don't want to over dry the skin. It just accentuates those lines, right? Okay, so Sue, I just upgraded your protocol. Clear it with Morgan if she's your acne coach. Um, she'll probably be fine with it, but um, always clear it with your acne coach. Um, here we go. If you were to recommend one product for rosacea, what would it be? Can I say two products? No. One product, it would be from Rhonda Allison and it would be her Relieve and Restore Gel. And then number two product would be Hale and Hush, Hale and Hush Quiet Wash. Because um, with two people with truly inflamed rosacea, just washing your face turns it bright red and that quiet wash just really helps take the redness out of it. And then of course, you've gotta have Hale and Hush Hydrate Gel <laughs> to go with it. And then you need Michelle Corley's Calming Moisturizer to go with it. So that's my two cents on a quickie rosacea protocol. Um, and then if you have that really dry skinned rosacea where you're just flaky and dry, then you need Rhonda, uh, Dr. Estes Dual Barrier Lotion to heal all that. Or you need Hale and Hush's Saffron Meristem Cream. 
because if you don't get blemishes with your rosacea, but you're really dry, then you're gonna want Hale and Hush's Saffron Meristem. It's the only thing that keeps that skin from getting that flaky, flakiness. It's amazing. So there's my one product for you. Good luck. <laughs> Sorry. It's hard for me to say one product. Things work synergistically. It's like, there's no, if you could eat one food, <laughs> there's not one food. You need a healthy diet. Okay, Valentina, do you recommend a moisturizing face mask at night for hydration to apply over your skincare? Well, sure. Um, it just depends on what your skincare, what skincare you're doing at nighttime, Valentina. I have several different masks for different reasons. It's all about what you're trying to achieve. So when I use the Emma Pell and then I put my balm over the top, that's that's like a face mask. That's like a night, uh, like a retinol sleeping mask that I'm putting on and I'm making it myself, it's amazing. If you have hyperpigmentation or you're trying to heal dark spots and maybe you've been acne prone, that cream, the night cream, or excuse me, the mask that people like to sleep in is that face reality bright and see mask because when you sleep in that mask, you wake up the next morning, your skin is noticeably lighter and brighter. Um, if you have really, really dry skin, there's a Michelle Corley. In fact, I think that's what this is. Michelle Corley, Michelle Corley Calm and Hydrate Cream Mask. There's a lot of people that use this as an all night sleeping mask. Um, there's Le Mew Hyaluronic Shea Mask. A lot of people use that as a body moisturizer and they also use it as a sleeping mask at night. So it just kind of depends what your goals are, what you're trying to achieve with your skin. If you're seeing a lot of broken capillaries, um, your skin's just not breathing well and it's sluggish, I probably wouldn't be putting a sleeping mask on you because I would be trying to get your skin to breathe better and I wouldn't want to be putting too much that might occlude the skin. So it always varies. Yes, Lisa, you said you email our office, just go to the live chat. I go to live chat and they'll show you where the links are for you go to artofskincare.com on the top it says consultations you click on consultations and then you'll see there's clear skin coaching there's a customized protocol and then there's healthy aging coaching with healthy aging coaching you work with me i write up a protocol for you i you fill out a questionnaire you send me pictures and on there you can list all your different concerns and um what you're wanting to do with your skin and what's going on. I evaluate it. I give you a, a protocol and then you get to check in with me again in three or four weeks and I see how you're doing and we decide if we're going to change anything or stay with it. If you do the customized protocol, it's very inexpensive. It's just $30, but you need to know, but you get to choose only one issue that you want to work on and you get to choose two brands and you have to choose those brands yourself. Um, and then you can do the $30 protocol. So that's kind of the difference. Of course, you can reach out to live chat and they will send you in the right direction on those. Okay. Uh, Parvin wants me to do a live YouTube on hair. Oh, thank you. You know, there is one. If you go to my channel, there is one that Celine and I did not very long ago, but um, I'll definitely put that on my list of videos to do. And thank you so much for the compliments. Um, Susan says, the skin on my thighs is getting creep crepey. Can you recommend something for legs? Yes, Susan. So there's a kit in the Rhonda Allison in the body care. There's a body care kit that I highly recommend starting with. Um, for one thing, we're using the bamboo scrub from that on our legs and really increasing exfoliation and detoxification. Um, there's a peptide spritz from Rhonda Allison that really detoxifies and smooths the skin. And then there's a cream called Bioreform 28. And that cream has a little retinol in it as well as 28 other actives and peptides and everything that you need for your body. It's used on the thighs. It's used on the arms. I use it on my neck. Um, pep, um, Bioreform 28 is amazing. The other thing that we use for smoothing the texture on our thighs is the MBK curve. That curve really opens up, um, moves lymph through the skin, opens up those cells so the fat can move and redistribute and everything gets smoother and nicer. When you use your MBK curve, the next day 
your skin feels firmer. So, and the more you use it, the better the results you will get with it. I will be doing um, a live coming up on body care and we'll touch on more of that kind of stuff. Because spring is coming, we're gonna be needing to put on our shorts. Um, when is the best time you need to apply vitamin C, A and PM or both? So that um, I use with my clients, and generally I just use vitamin C serum during the day. But if you're not using any other corrective, a retinol or anything like that at night, then you should use your vitamin C serum twice a day. You need antioxidant protection in your skin, starting from a very young age. By the time my cl clients hit 25, I have them on an antioxidant serum or a vitamin C serum. It's just so important. That's the only way we can protect our skin from the number one cause of premature aging, and that is environmental damage. Okay. Bassia wants to know if I could link all the, all the products I used. I'm not gonna link the products, but what I did do is I linked the web page. So if you go to down there, you'll see the web page for Genus PM Protocol. Um, if you hit that, you'll see all the products that I use in my PM routine. If there was something that I mentioned when I'm answering these questions, you'll have to reach out to live chat and have them help you with that because I won't be able to get in there and put all those in there. If you have something particular you're thinking of, Bassia, before I hang, before we hang up, ask it and I'll try and remember what product it is you're trying you're thinking of that you're wanting to write down. Best body products for crepiness. Yeah, so we just kind of touched on that a minute ago. So the peptide spritz and Bioreform 28. I mix those together in my hands and I rub those on every day. Hands down, amazing for it. The other thing is increasing your exfoliation when you're in the shower. So I use Rhonda Allison's bamboo scrub in the shower and that just makes your skin silky soft. And then when you put on the peptide spritz and Bioreform 28, you put those on and your skin just soaks them up and it's wonderful. Um, I also have clients who, um, use the peptide spritz from Rhonda Allison and Neogenesis's body cream. Those two combined can be really great for crepiness as well. Um, and they're also actually, we've, we've had some pictures, I think they've been on our feed and we have a client who just had really crepey arm skin hanging there. And what she used was Neogenesis Recovery and Neogenesis Skin Serum on her arms through there, it totally transformed that ropey, crepey skin. So there's a few different things you can do depending on how severe your crepiness is. You can do a multi-pronged approach at 65. Yeah, any of those that I mentioned. Another thing I do, some clients, if I see, if I can see a picture of the skin or get my eyes on it, um, sometimes I also work into that routine, Rhonda Allison's peel cream. So maybe you might alternate every other night between Bioreform 28 and peel cream or Neogenesis body lotion and peel cream every other night so that you're really increasing that exfoliation and allowing that skin to retexturize and become healthier. Can use other products when you're using the Sculpla Cavi and the moisturizer. Absolutely you can. And if you search on my channel, um, you'll see things, some, there's several videos, like one on how to optimize your Sculpla. Um, we use all kinds of things with there. You do have to be careful what you're using with Cavi because some things will interfere with the Cavi delivery system. But we use the Emma Pell Serum. Um, we use Dr. Estes Ampules. Um, quite, we have quite a few different serums, Neogenesis Recovery Serum. There's quite a few different things that can be used with Cavi that don't interfere with that delivery system. And you can learn more about them by watching um, some of our other videos, or you can reach out to us on live chat and they can even maybe send you over a protocol. What is the best product for hyperpigmentation? That really depends on what caused your hyperpigmentation. Um, I have a few favorites. Um, Rhonda Allison's Natural Mega Brightening Serum. You can use that for three months on and three months off. That's pretty amazing. I love Pure Herbs. 
um, caviar lime exfoliant. Uh, that really can help. Um, using a vitamin C serum in combination with Sorella's Lemon Lightning Serum, that can really help. But I kind of have to get my eyes on your hyperpigmentation and know what you've tried in the past in order to really steer you in the right direction because everyone's skin is different. And there's not just one product out there that's going to cure everybody's hyperpigmentation. Um, Valentina, yes, the curve works great on my under crepey arms. It really makes a difference. Absolutely. The MBK curve on crepey arms, crepey legs, crepey tummies, crepey necks and jaws. It, it's the best. <laughs> Rima says, what would you recommend for pregnancy discoloration and brightening? Um, gosh, we have a whole bunch of you guys right now with hyperpigmentation. So, um, so if it's pregnancy discoloration, that's usually called melasma. And I have some different, I use a Rhonda Ellis protocol with my clients who have melasma. Um, and the products that I use help to inhibit those hormones in the skin that are that are super firing and creating that hyperpigmentation. Um, I am really careful with pig, hyperpigmentation because it is an inflammatory disorder. I'm careful not to use things that are too harsh and too strong because if you do that, you're just going to, you'll get rid of some of that hyperpigmentation, but because your skin is on alarm, the minute you go out in the heat, or the minute you go in the sun, it's gonna resurge really fast and you're gonna see a, you know, a rebounding effect with that. Rima, I recommend doing a customized protocol. It's just $30 on our website and then I can get my eyes on your skin and my team and I, we can look, in, look at it and discuss and put together the perfect protocol to help you with your melasma. Um, you may even be able Live chat may have one of my protocols available to give out from Rhonda Allison for melasma, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Okay, everybody, it's been an hour. It's been a wonderful hour. So fun sharing with you my PM routine. Um, I think I'm just racking my brain. Is there any other last thing I need to mention about it? I think we covered it. I don't think I missed a thing this time. So oftentimes I hang up with you guys, I get off of YouTube and then I think, oh, I should have mentioned this or that. But I think we did a pretty good job today. Let's see if we have any last questions that just came in. Nope, just a thanks. Yes, thank you. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for being here today. And I'll see you again next Tuesday at 1130 for our next live. Have a great week.